Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So allegedly Megan's legal team, her lawyers, have said that the Mail on Sunday cannot win. They just simply cannot win this legal case and that they don't have a legal case, that they're all in the wrong, which I personally don't believe because if her former palace aides do actually stand trial against her, and do actually give evidence against her, especially regarding her leaking her letter to her father, to the press herself, and actually leaking it with full intent to create some kind of media storm, then they do have a chance. So I'm gonna get on with this article, I'm gonna read it out to you guys, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts and feelings regarding what I think is true, and what I think is quite fabricated, or should I say far-fetched. So the article was titled, Megan's Lawyers, The Triple Barreled Invasion on Privacy and Why They Say the Mail Cannot Win. This is being written by Chris Shipp, who is a famous royal commentator, royal editor, and royal watcher. He's always on TV over here, especially when it comes to the royal family. He always drops his thoughts. I'm going to get into it because he's a very good source to use. The Duchess of Sussex's lawyers have argued that her privacy case against the Mail on Sunday does not need to go to trial because the newspaper has no real prospect of success. Meghan Markle was suing the newspaper's owners for invasion of privacy after it published the contents of a personal letter she wrote to her father in the summer of 2018, shortly after the royal wedding in Windsor. The Duchess claims it was a direct assault on three of the four strands of her privacy rights. Her lawyer called it a triple barreled invasion because the Mail on Sunday's article infringed her rights to a private life, a family life, and her correspondence. Now, my personal thoughts, just before I finish the rest of the article, it's very difficult to really believe that because we do know that she contributed to Finding Freedom, which was intended for a public media scrutiny or a public discussion, at least. We also know that her friends discussed the existence of this letter to Thomas Markle, which was intended to go into a public forum and she had no issue with that. A trial has been penciled in for October after a delay requested by Megan, but she's applying for a summary judgment instead. So you can see that Megan Mark was now getting cold feet. She was more than happy to go ahead with this legal process, this vilification of the Mail on Sunday. But as soon as it was substantiated that she had actually given evidence and given her personal version of accounts regarding her time in the royal firm in the Finding Freedom, or should I say Finding Freebies book, it seems as though she has backed down a peg or two or six or five or 10, right? She doesn't want to go ahead and she certainly doesn't want to have the media frenzy because I think she's realized the error of her ways. Not only has she degraded her father, the royal firm, but she's also degraded herself and she has destroyed her likability globally, which is something that she's currently scrambling for to get back. And it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be a bit of an uphill battle for her to actually come across as a nice, likable person. Because let's face it, this is someone who never stood around for five minutes to even get absorbed into the role of what it was to be a royal, a senior royal, someone who was serving the queen and country. She didn't want to do the work, she just wanted the money. So anyway, I'm going to get back to the article now. A trial has been penciled in for October. If successful, a summary judgment would involve the judge deciding the case and the trial would no longer go ahead. The matter is being argued in a virtual hearing of the High Court, which was beset by a short delay at the start because the microphone on the laptop of Megan's lawyers wouldn't work. Hmm, interesting, how convenient. Now, allegedly these lawyers who are banking millions and millions and millions of pounds to take these cases, especially for high profile celebrities like Megan and Harry, 
or high profile individual, should I say, suddenly don't have a working microphone. It's very convenient, isn't it? So it continues on. Her legal team argues that the Mail on Sunday committed a plain and serious breach of Meghan's privacy when in February 2019, it published extracts from the letter she had sent to her father about the breakdown of their relationship. The case they claim centers around one simple question. Who has the rights of control over the contents of a letter which is self-evidently private and sensitive? Justice Rushbrook QC for the Duchess of Sussex told the judge that it doesn't matter whether the writer of the letter is a duchess or an ordinary citizen, but he said, it is clear that Meghan, not the Mail on Sunday, has the rights of control over its contents. Meghan wrote the five page letter to her father in August, 2019, and sent it by FedEx recorded delivery to her father at his home in Mexico. The duchess started her 1,250 word letter with the sentence, daddy, it is with a heavy heart that I write this not understanding why you have chosen to take this path, turning a blind eye to the pain you are causing. Extracts also read out in court include Megan writing, your actions have broken my heart into a million pieces. Dad, I'm so heartbroken. I love you. I have one father. Please stop victimizing me through the media so we can repair our relationship. If you love me, as you tell the press you do, please stop. Please allow us to live our lives in peace. Please stop lying. Please stop creating so much pain. Please stop exploiting my relationship with my husband. Megan also accused her father of not protecting her from the stories her half-sister Samantha Markle had been given to some newspapers and TV shows, which Megan wrote made her crumble. You fixated and clicked on the lies they were writing about me, especially those manufactured by your other daughter who I barely know. You watched me silently suffer at the hands of her vicious lies. I crumbled inside. Her lawyers say the letter can be characterized as a message of peace after the dramatic and sudden breakdown of the relationship between Meghan and Thomas Markle. Meghan's intentions were to encourage her father to stop talking to the press. The Duchess's team points to the last line of the letter, which the Mail on Sunday decided not to publish. Meghan wrote, I ask for nothing other than peace, and I wish the same for you. The judge, Mr. Justice Warby, told the court that he had read the biography Finding Freedom, which also included some extracts from the letter. But when asked if he had enjoyed it, he diplomatically said, I don't think I should answer that. The Mail on Sunday's owners, Associated Newspapers Limited, claims there was a public interest in publishing the letter because Meghan was a senior member of the royal family at the time. The newspaper also claims Meghan must have known the letter would be leaked to the press at the time of writing it. The Mail will make its submissions to the summary judge hearing in due course and that is the end of Chris Ship's article. So this is the dynamic that is going on and I guess they're having this back and forth with the Mail on Sunday's legal team regarding the letter. Reading a couple of those excerpts from the letter seems quite heartbreaking for me but I would only write those words if I actually meant them. Meghan Markle should have made much more of an effort to actually talk to her dad Thomas Markle. She definitely should have made much more of an effort to also talk to her sister. She seems as though she's very distanced and detached from Samantha Markle's pleas especially Samantha Markle's pleas to get her to get in touch with their dad. She said that she had no relationship with her sister, yet there is evidence of Meghan going to Samantha's graduation and looking extremely close to Samantha. So they did have some kind of relationship. Thomas Markle Jr., who is Meghan Markle's brother, he's her older brother, also talks about the way in which when Meghan first got onto Suits, they would always meet up every weekend or at least every two weeks to see their father and they'd go out and have dinner. But then as soon as she got more and more famous, she then decided to change. Her former friend, Preeti, also said the same thing, that she became a person that she did not recognize any longer. And she just simply did not understand it. She didn't understand. What do I really think? It's one thing for Meghan Markle's legal team to publicly say that they don't have a case, but 
obviously Justice Warby has read the Find and Freedom book. He's also read the letter and he's also read the accounts of these five friends that Meghan Markle has who were leaking to, I think it was Cosmopolitan at the time regarding the existence of the letter, which she has no problem with. I'm not sure if Meghan Markle's going to get the summary judgment that she craves. And I don't think that this case is appropriate for a summary judgment. I think that there's far too much going on here and far too much that needs to be let out in the open air for them to simply just settle it on paper without her having to stand trial. We have the four palace aides who are also desperate to come forward. So I think that it should definitely go to trial in October. It's penciled down for that date and I think that they should go ahead with that. That's all I'm going to say for now. But they're definitely trying to intimidate the other side. They're definitely trying to make them look redundant. How far they get, who knows? We know that this is one of Meghan Markle's favorite tactics to make the other side feel as though they don't have any case whatsoever. I'll be back for another video. Bye guys.